and glorify God on the day he visits us. You see, this is one of the things that separates the, the Christian's good deeds from what the world might call its own good deeds. When the human race without Christ does its good deeds, it looks for honor for themselves. People look at me as a good person. And that's a nice thing. But as a Christian, our goal has, has got to be bigger and stronger and further. The ultimate purpose of doing this good deeds is to reflect that up to God. Get people to see that we need to do these good deeds because we've been called by Jesus Christ to be one of his children, one of his family. That's how we give God the glory. Jesus said it this way in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds. But he didn't stop there. That they may see their good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That's the ultimate purpose of us doing the right thing, of doing the righteous thing, of doing the loving thing is that people see in us a reflection of God. Never perfect, mind you. But it's a way for us to do mission work. As you have a transition in pastorates, it's always a good thing to go back to the mission of your congregation. I, I peeked at your website, and this is what I found. Zion Evangelical Lutheran Church exists to glorify the triune God by proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ to our families, our community, and our world. It's good on a day like today, like Father's Day, to think about how we do it to our families by modeling Christian love by sharing the word of God, by giving God the glory in what we live by example to our children and grandchildren in what we say to our community. That's the immediate thing that we serve. That's why you're here in Winthrop as a church, to witness to the community and ultimately to reach the world. There's another reason to think about your mission statement in giving God the glory as you have a change in pastorates. Your former pastor, Pastor Tesmer, served you for 22 years. It's a long time. So if you're 25 years or, or younger, he's the only pastor you ever knew. If Pastor Tesmer married you, He's the only pastor your children know. And sometimes when a pastor's been around for a long time, people kind of expect the next pastor to be a lot like Pastor Tesmer. Now, I don't know Pastor Mike or Andrew Lennon, but I do know this. He's going to be different than Pastor Tesmer. Because <laughs> he's a human being. And just as you look around in your room, all of you are different from one another. Pastor Meitner is going to have different strengths. Some of the differences you might find very refreshing. Other differences you might find different. And sometimes it happens that in a congregation you start to dwell on those differences and say, I don't know if I like this. That's why it's important to focus on our mission statement. What are we about as a congregation? To give God the glory. And that's going to lead us to adjust to what's going to be a period of adjustment. As, as Pastor Meitner, who, who doesn't know your community, gets to know you and to know your community gets to have some of the experience that Pastor Tesler had for 22 years. 
as he got to know the community. And it also is going to lead us, if we keep God at the center of why we're here, to adjust so that each of us with our own strengths finds a way to make this congregation work, to give God the glory. So that you as a congregation can share the gospel again in a wonderful, loving way with your family, your community, and the world at large. Giving God the glory is something also we seek to do at the Lutheran Home Association. And your congregation, I want to thank you, has had a long history of a partnership with our organization. And I want to share with you that during this time of the COVID challenge, again, it was important that we give God the glory, that we respect civil government when they put restrictions on it, on our, 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 our facilities that are very hard, in it, mind you. Because we have not allowed visitors, anybody really, to come into our facilities to protect our aged residents. We can't even allow pastors to come and visit their residents. The only exception we're allowed to make is when someone was, was dying that we can let us, a, a close circle of family members, come there to support that individual. But that's why we're so grateful too that we've been chaplains that are assigned to our facilities. In Belle Plain, Pastor Frederick and Pastor Feldhaus continue to, to visit with individuals always with social distancing in mind, but are there to comfort them and to share the gospel with them. We're still able to do that. To God be the glory. Friends, to God be the glory. It's, it's a good model. It could be one of many models that you have as a Christian, but it's certainly a good one. It reminds us during our lifetime that our goal is to Praise God. And let that show in every act and every word. It's also good that you have it as part of your mission statement. It keeps the focus on God. It keeps the focus on service. As we give Him the glory for the great gift of His salvation that He has given us. Amen. Peace, peace. And now the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to join with me to confessing our Christian faith. And as we do this, remember how this creed, the Apostles' Creed, has been part of the confession of the Christian Church for thousands of years, confessed by millions of Christians. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to heaven. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
O Lord God, we thank you for the wondrous gift of Jesus Christ, your Son, and for the promised graces we have received through him. We thank you that through his perfect life and his obedience to death on the cross, we have been granted cleansing and pardon for all of our sins. We thank you that in his resurrection we have the promise of life everlasting, and that in his ascension to the right hand of your majesty, we have the assurance that he continually intercedes for us. Dwell with us in our homes, O oh Lord, that, and let the trust of our families be centered in you alone, so that no difficulty, trial, or adversity rob us of the conviction that you are our helper in every time of need. Relieve the afflictions of the weary and the sick, and dry the tears of the troubled and sorrowful. Lead them to look to you as the unfailing spring of healing and joy. In all these things, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, and through him, give all glory to you. Heavenly Father, bless all earthly fathers as they seek to fulfill the calling you have entrusted to them. Give them loving hearts and sound judgment to exercise godly leadership in the family. May they daily take to heart your admonition not to discourage or embitter their children by treating them harshly or unfairly. Help them instead to bring up their children in the training and instruction of the Lord. In loving Christian fathers, may children see reflections of you, the Father whose love for us is perfect and complete. And compassionate Father, in your mercy you transform even sickness and disease into a blessing for your children. With this confidence we commend all who are sick or ailing to your tender care. We pray, pray especially for Rosie Earhart. Provide healing and relief according to your infinite wisdom and boundless mercy. Grant patient endurance if her suffering is to linger or be final. Help her find true spiritual strength through Jesus and his cross during this time of physical weakness. By the work of the Holy Spirit, teach her always to trust in your forgiveness, grace, and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we join our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
confirmation next week. We'll have to limit the size, hopefully, by uh, the attendees. Uh, but to remind us also of when we made our confession before the Lord and uh, encourage us to continue that and take it into the world. We pray for our confirmants. Lord God, Heavenly Father, in holy baptism, you began your good work in these young believers. You have also blessed their training and instruction in your word, so that they now look forward to their confirmation and receiving your holy communion. We pray that you will pour out your Holy Spirit in their hearts and minds as they study your word, so they may truly love and fear you, confess their faith joyfully and boldly, and with their lips and their lives glorify you, their faithful God and Lord, through Jesus Christ, their Savior and ours. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.
made the chancel and the altar areas last week and took care of uh, much of that. We give thanks to those cleaners and also the ongoing uh, work of the altar guild, as well as all of the volunteers in the congregation. But thank you very, very much. It makes everything run so very smoothly. And again, we've received a letter of thanksgiving. This is from Christopher Gore. He writes, Dear members of Zion, I received notice this week that I had received a donation from you to my student account at Martin Luther College. I cannot describe how surprised and humble I was to learn this. Thank you very, very much. I am in the seminary certification program and am entering my final year at MLC. My classes are going well and I pray that we may be able to have in-person classes on conference this fall. I also miss the opportunities to help churches in the area with their services, as he did here several times this last year until the virus uh, struck. Uh, help them either with liturgy or uh, as a lecturer. Uh, look forward to doing more of that soon, hopefully. Your generosity is truly a blessing to me and my family. My wife and I have six children. I work part-time at Kraft, but our family is on a strict budget. Thank you for your support. I eagerly look forward to completing the schooling at MLC, then the seminary, and the opportunity to serve as pastor in one of our congregations. May the Lord bless you as he has blessed me through you, Christopher Gore. And we'll post this note also on the bulletin board in the hallway out there. And then before we leave, uh, we should have Pastor Seabell give us a little bit of an update uh, on the Luther Home Association and there are flyers in back. If you didn't pick up one of the flyers there on the table there by the bulletins, please do. Uh, just want to call our attention to a couple of the things on there. Uh, it, there's a lead article is on some of the innovative ways uh, our, our staff is working with, with our residents to uh, overcome the isolation of the COVID virus. We had a birthday parade for one of our residents at home, uh, and that's highlighted there. Uh, the other thing with Jesus Cares Ministry, of course, has been a real challenge with social distancing. The Jesus Cares Ministry, we are assist congregations to reach to people with intellectual disabilities or live in group homes right in your area. Uh, of course, social distancing has prevented those meetings, uh, but we now have put our Worship at the Cross services online. Uh, we actually once a week do a live broadcast on Facebook which allows people to send in their prayer requests which then are, are read and recognized by the worship leader uh, at the end of the service. Uh, that broadcast is also archived on uh, YouTube allowing people to go to it again and again and again and again. And it's another aspect of Jesus Cares that we are, are providing. And then finally, uh, we, we are offering weekly devotions written by our chaplains. And if you would like to sign up for that to be delivered to your mailbox, uh, there's information on how to do that uh, on the brochure. Again, I thank you for the partnership, the invitation to preach today, and God be with you as you would live to his glory. Thank you, Blessed Week.